In one of my recent videos, I showcased all the different hardware that I used to help me game with my disability. But without some incredible software that even you could adopt into your gaming setups, the likes of my Sip and Puff device would be about as useful as a blow up dartboard. So let's go through my software and I'm sure at least one of them you'll want to install. But if you aren't sure, stay to the end because I'm sharing some ideas of how you could implement it into your gaming setup, whether you have a disability or not. But before I go on to the software itself, if you want to download any of the software I'm talking about, I've got all the links in the description. And the best part is all these pieces of software are free. The first piece of software and probably the software a lot of you already have installed on your PC is Logitech G Hub and Logitech's gaming software. The latter is an older version of Logitech G Hub and something I have to use because my Logitech G13 one handed keyboard is no longer supported by Logitech, so I have to use their legacy software. Both of these softwares, though, basically enable to do the same thing. It's just the fact that the G13 isn't supported within G Hub. Logitech gaming software basically just enables me to program the keys on my Logitech G13 one handed keyboard as none of the keys are pre programmed. So when you get out of the box, you have to go in there and program whatever keys you want each button to be and whatever you want the joystick to be, which does come in incredibly handy, especially with the joystick, as this is what I have programmed to my WASD movement. G Hub is basically the same, but with a few extra bells and whistles that enable me to program my mouse and my keyboard. G Hub for my keyboard, I mainly use for managing my RGB effects, so I can recognize keys quickly based upon their color, making it a lot easier for me to type. Whilst there's also functionality within G Hub, to disable specific keys which you might accidentally tap whilst gaming. Where G-Hub really comes into its own is the easy management of my mouse, which without would make gaming with my mouse a lot less accessible. My favorite feature within the software is the ability to program any button on the mouse to carry out any function that I want. So say if you want to go rogue and have your left mouse button be your right click, you can do that. So using this feature, so I have my mouse set up so that I can change my DPI by pressing the G6 button and then right click using the G8 button on the mouse. I have this set up for me because I can sometimes struggle stretching my fingers to the right mouse button on my mouse. And I find it a lot easier to reach the buttons on the left of the mouse. Oh, and yeah, those I've noticed, my biggest disability is that I'm left-handed. G Hub also provides an easy way to change DPI mid game with different DPI profiles. The reason why I find this really useful is because I struggle to pick up the mouse. So when I reach the edge of my mouse mat, I have to drag the mouse back to the center of my mouse mat, which will obviously move the cursor back to where it originally was. So say I'm playing Overwatch on a low DPI and I want to turn 180 degrees. I'd have to take my mouse to the edge of the mouse mat. And then when it comes to tracking the enemy, I'd have to try and recenter the mouse in the middle of the mouse mat, which would then be counteracted by me trying to get the mouse back in the center of my mouse mat ready to aim. This also can't be solved by having a high DPI because I really struggle to aim with a high DPI due to my lack of dexterity in my hands. The solution therefore was to set up two DPI profiles within G Hub, one high DPI profile for quick turns and spinning 180 degrees and one low DPI profile for aiming and fine motor control. These profiles can then be switched mid game by pressing that G6 button on my mouse. And ever since implementing this feature, I found my gameplay has improved no end. Time for the next piece of software. And honestly, Joy to Key is just chef's kiss perfection. If you can't work out from the title, the whole purpose of Joy to Key is to translate controller or joystick inputs virtually into keyboard inputs on your PC, which is great for people with disabilities like myself, or just people that want to play using a controller or a joystick on a PC when games don't offer that native controller support. Every button on your controller can have a function that can be programmed in the software to carry out a key binding on your keyboard or a mouse action and plenty of other options to be performed when pressed. The software is also great because it offers different profiles that you can create. I use this to set up different profiles for every game I'm going to play. This means I don't have to worry about editing the key bindings in the software every time I play a new game. For those of you who have seen my gameplay, you know I don't play with a controller on my PC. So what function does this software have in my gaming setup? Well, 
my Sip and Puff device is registered on my computer as a controller, but also for some reason doesn't actually get registered in any of the games that I play. To solve this issue of it not getting registered in any games, I use Droid to Key to convert the signals sent from my Sip and Puff device into key bindings, which I can then use in the games I play. Fish. Okay, for those of you that have seen my content before, you know what we're going to talk about now. For those of you who are new to my channel, firstly, hi. We're now going to go through my favorite software, Voice Macro. Voice Macro is a piece of software that listens out for pre-programmed phrases using voice recognition. And when that voice recognition hears that pre-programmed phrase, fish, it triggers a pre-programmed action. These actions can be both keyboard inputs or mouse inputs, including moving your mouse cursor to pre-programmed coordinates on your screen. My preferable use for this is just a simple keyboard input, often just a singular key, which I often use when gaming to activate things like my ultimate, which I use fish for. The reason why I use this software is because I struggle pressing keys on my keyboard in the middle of a gaming session quickly. So if you wanna learn how to set up voice macros for yourself and learn how to hands-free game, I've already recorded a video showing you how you can set up profiles and create simple voice macros in a previous video, which you'll find on a card up here or up there. I can't remember what side YouTube puts it. Now, obviously I've used all these different pieces of software and my hardware to combat issues I have when gaming with my disability. But I put my thinking cap on and try to think of some ideas which you could implement this software into your gaming setup, whether you have a disability or whether you don't. My first idea is to get rid of those pesky ping menus where you either have to use a multiple hotkeys or hold down a key and then select which item you want to ping using your mouse. But how cool would it be to be able to ping just by using your voice? Just set up some key bindings for every type of ping you want to have in the game and then go into voice macro, match that key binding up to a program action in voice macro and then choose what phrase you want to say to activate the ping the next time you log into your game say that phrase and it will ping for you on your game group Come over here. or have you ever been playing a game on your mouse and keyboard but start getting finger cramp from your wsd keys now i don't know if people with functional hands ever have that but i'm just imagining some of you do well a solution could be grabbing your nearest controller plugging it in, downloading Joy to Key, setting up WSD to be one of your joysticks, then there you go. Your movement's carried out now by your controller and you can use your mouse to carry on with your normal aim, giving you the opportunity to carry on enjoying your games and give your hand and your fingers a little bit of a rest. However, if you come up with any ideas or cool functions that you could add into your game by using any of these software, let me know in the comments. I'm really intrigued to know what all of you come up with. Also, if you look at installing any of this software and get stuck with any issues, please don't hesitate to message me on Discord or put a comment in the comments and I will try keep an eye out for them. As always, guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you all soon.